Uh, we're in Ruth chapter number three this morning. So uh, that's exciting. We finished out uh, chapter two uh, yesterday and we left Naomi and Ruth in a good mood. Ruth is in a great mood because she has this job and she has met this man that is caring for her needs, uh, that knows her situation, that has um, uh, just been a blessing and an, an encouragement to her. His name is Boaz. Naomi is encouraged because she's seeing God. She's seeing how God is orchestrating. And all of these things that were just in theory before, the kinsman redeemer and the word of God and the near kinsman, she's beginning to see how God is not only way out there blessing other people, but how God is connecting the dots in her own experience. That's a great thing. It's a great thing when we know not just about God, uh, that's the facts, that's the figures, that's the... But when we know God, when we know that God is our personal God who is involved in intricate ways in our lives, and Naomi is learning that. And it's interesting because there's a huge paradigm shift. There's a, a huge perspective shift in Naomi's life. Chapters one and two, she's generally just kind of looking at herself and her problems, woe is me. Chapters three and four, her focus is entirely upon seeking the good and the benefit of another, in this case, Ruth. And a wonderful th thing happens in our life when we're willing to get our eyes off of the hurts that we're nurturing and get them on the blessings uh, of others and the way by which we can be a part of that blessing. So look, if you would, at uh, Ruth chapter 3 and verse number 1. Well, the Bible says, then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, my daughter. And I love the relational aspect of that. Now, of course, we know that Naomi, this was not her physical daughter. We know that this is her daughter-in-law, this Moabite. And yet what a relationship has been forged as Naomi has uh, fallen in love with this girl that has not given up on her, this girl that has adopted her and her God and her country, and what, what a bond. And that's so often the case uh, when it comes to trouble. The people with whom we share trouble are often the people that become life's most precious friends. Think about organizations like VFW, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and just the camaraderie that people have that goes through the same kinds of challenges. Uh, there's, a, there's a a special bond there between Paul and Silas as they're in the prison together at Philippi and so on. So my daughter, says Naomi in verse number one, uh, I, let me see here, I'm flipping the page. Yes, my daughter, sh shall I not seek rest for thee? that it may be well with thee. In other words, uh, Naomi is saying, uh, Ruth, shouldn't I take the responsibility as your mother, as your guide to seek what is best for you? To seek rest means Naomi wanted to be confident that Ruth's future was secure. And specifically what she's talking about here is marriage, that Ruth would have security in a husband, in a family, in all that went along with it. And so, uh, Ruth, I am vested in your success. I am vested in your security, in your blessing. And how is Naomi going to act upon that desire to be a blessing to Ruth? That's really what the rest of the chapter is all about. So look at verse number two. And now, uh, Naomi goes on to say to Ruth, and now is not Boaz of our kindred with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. So a couple things we have to keep in mind is some time has elapsed. So at the end of chapter two, remember uh, Ruth had come home after that first blessed day with Boaz. 
And from that point on, for the rest of the season, the Bible says, Ruth went to work every day. She reaped in the fields. Uh, she did that work until the end of the season. Now the season has ended, and with the end of the uh, ending of the season, the nature of the work has changed. Uh, there, there is no longer going to be work in that field. And so time is of the essence. If something doesn't happen to make a connection between Boaz and Ruth, it's quite possible that they will never work together again. It's quite possible that Ruth will move on to other fields or other jobs. So I think Naomi intuitively understands all of this. She understands that there is a time constraint. She also understands that at the end of the season, uh, the, the threshing floor, the place where the the chaff and the seed would be separated so that the grain could be gathered for its future use. That was an important part of the whole process. So important was the threshing part of the process that typically that was not a job that would be allocated to just any old person. In this case, uh, Naomi knew that Boaz himself would take on that responsibility. So what does Naomi know? Naomi knows that time is short. Naomi knows that the job that's going to be done is so important that uh, Boaz himself will be there and that he will be alone uh, in that job or essentially alone. So that's a, a recipe for what Naomi hopes to see accomplished because she wants Ruth to be able to liaison with Boaz she wants Boaz to have the opportunity to act upon what the Bible has permitted him to do, and that is to be the kinsman redeemer, to recognize that Ruth is related to him via the dead husband, uh, to recognize that he has the prerogative to fulfill the job of the, of the near kinsman and to marry her. And no doubt over this period of time, the fondness that Boaz has for Ruth and the respect that Ruth has for Boaz has grown. So Naomi is seeing all of these factors come together. The timing, uh, the situation, uh, how the Bible comes to bear. So often in life, the will of God and decisions we make are certainly a matter of right and wrong. What does the Bible say? And Naomi certainly is following the Bible prescription here. It's a near kinsman. She's not trying to marry Ruth off to some other person or somebody whom God would not choose or some Moabite. No, she's following the, the, the uh, principles of the Bible, but she's also recognizing the importance of timing. And as believers, we need to be aware of both. What does the Bible say? What is my responsibility? Uh, Lord, give me wisdom about timing and the decisions I'm making. So all of that is happening uh, all together, all at once. And, and watch uh, what she goes on to say in verse number three. Wash thyself, therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. So, uh, Ruth, uh, tonight's your night. So I want you to prepare. So get yourself all dolled up. Uh, get yourself all cleaned up. Get yourself all perfumed up. And I want you to go to where Boaz is. But don't let him know that you're there. Do it surreptitiously. Wait till he's done working. Wait until he's done eating and drinking. And then... At that point, uh, I want you to do something else and say something else. What is Ruth supposed to do? What is Ruth supposed to say? Well, you're going to have to wait because we'll talk about that tomorrow. But it is a precious part of scripture that you do not want to miss. So uh, have a great day today. I look forward to gathering back with you on our last day together for the week, at least tomorrow. And let's see how this exciting story unfolds. God bless you, my friends.